Vincent Price? How do you like it? Eddie, are you sure you want to go through with this? Not everybody can play Shakespeare and win. Well, after all, comedy and tragedy are very close. You see, I tell a joke, it gets a laugh. Comedy. And tragedy? Same joke, no laugh. <laughs> well, in that case, you shouldn't have any trouble. What's one more tragedy? <laughs> oh, Vince, thou knave, thou pullest my leg. Lend thine ears to this, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet? Eddie, you're going to play Romeo? Oh, sure. Yeah, but he's supposed to be 17 years old. Well, see, that's the point. For years, they've been wasting such a good part on a kid who should be playing Henry Aldrich, a sort of an Eddie Fisher type, you know. <laughs> I want to show you what a little maturity can do to this. Now knowest the mask of night is on my face, else would a maiden blush bepaint my cheek. For that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I just don't feel these lines. Well, Eddie, maybe that's because the lines you just read belong to Juliet. <laughs> hmm? Hey, listen to the music. We're starting a show. You got a play to do tonight. Good luck. Thank you. Follow me, Vince. Friends, Romans, and TV viewers, the Eddie Cantor Comedy Theater is proud to present the comedy, How Much for Van Such, But Soft. What light through yonder curtain breaks? Tis the play, and Price is the star. Yadzooks. What a joint. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, the Sherry Carlton Hotel. Uh. Look at what you get when you spend $200 a day. At these prices, you don't have to bother to come in and change the sheets. You just throw away the beds. <laughs> don't lose your heads now. We only got 16 bucks between us. We only took this place for business reasons. And if Morton don't get here soon, we ain't even going to have enough of the ride in the elevator. Morton, where's Lawrence P. Stuyvesant III? I don't know how to tell you this, Charlie, but the deal's off. Stuyvesant left yesterday for the Bahamas to go deep sea fishing. What? He can't do that to us. We just took this suit. We're in a spot. We gotta pay for this room. After the way we worked and sweated to get this kidnapping just right. These multi-millionaires. What do they care? <laughs> well, there's only one answer. We'll just have to kidnap some other millionaire. Huh, some kidnappers. I'll never know why you had to rent such an expensive suite anyhow just to keep a guy for ransom. I'm going to be dreaming about this place when I'm asleep in my one-room apartment. We're after a millionaire. You think he'd like being held in some dump? Like that clothes closet you live in? We just want to kidnap him. We don't want to get him mad at us. Where are you going to get another millionaire to kidnap? The same place we got Stuyvesant. Biggie, where's our copy of the social register? Coming up, boss. Let's see now. Van der Grass, Van der Green, Van Rogers, Van Such. Rodney Van Such, New York City. Hey, ain't he the guy who inherited $200 million? Yeah. Then this is our boy. Why, he won't even miss a million dollars ransom. Yeah. Imagine how that guy must throw his money around. <laughs> I've been studying all this, but 
this a rather complicated way of getting Mr. Van Such to build a new factory out west? Shh, don't say that. Don't even mention the new factory to Mr. Van Such. Why, when he hears those three words, the new factory, hmm, he gets hysterical. Hysterical? But why? Because the new factory involves two other dirty words. Spending money. I don't believe he's so cheap. He pays good salaries. He's considerate of his employees. That sounds like him coming. Now remember, not one word about... Good morning, gentlemen. Good money. Uh, good morning, boss. Well, what have we here? Well, it's a little project I've been wanting to show you, boss. Hmm, an electric train. What does a thing like this cost? I borrowed it from my son. From your son? Oh! Oh, you borrowed it. Well, now, what about this little project? Well, briefly, it concerns improving our operations. Now, this is our plant here in the East, right? Mm-hmm. And, of course, we sell a lot of our products in the East, but we also sell a lot of them in the West, right? Absolutely. So this train has to take our products from the East to the West, right? Oh, my, yes. But... But what? But now the train is empty, and it has to go back to the east to get some more of our product, right? Mm, yes. That is just my point. Suppose instead of our products, we put uh, machinery like this on the train and send them to the west. And then we take the machinery off the train and set it here like that. And they make the products for the West. Isn't that a great idea? Positively ingenious. In that way, we save all of the money it costs to ship our product from the East to the West. Exactly. But we can't have these machines out in the open where everyone can see them, can we? Naturally. So, we put something around them, like that. <laughs> and of course, you know it rains out there. So we have to throw a cover over it, right? Positively. Like that. Right? <gasps> the new factory. Remember, Biggie, when you're talking to Van Such, you're supposed to be a millionaire. It's one millionaire talking to another, like we rehearsed. Yeah. There he is. Go ahead. Pardon that. Uh, Shay, uh, have you got a light? Oh, no, no, not. Shay, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> aren't you Rodney Van Such? Well, uh, yes. Well, aren't this a coincidence? I'm Chauncey DeWitt, the third, trust the flesh. How do you do? Yeah, me and the boys are sitting around the Mother in the Air's Club this afternoon talking about you. Ain't you got over a hundred million in a kick? Uh, yes. Hmm. Well, then you qualify. Qualify for what? For membership in the club. We just kicked out Marmy Duke the Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Turned out that they only had 98 million. Oh. Poverty stricken. So why don't you and I go over to Sherry Carlton to uh, swoop B? Well, really, I, I couldn't. Oh, come on. We sit down with the boys and talk about money, have a bite of dinner. Dinner? Yes. Well, tell me, is there a membership fee? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you mean it doesn't cost anything to join? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, there's a membership fee, yes, yes. Oh, well, uh, how much does it cost, including dinners? Well, to keep the riffraff out, 100,000 a year. <laughs> what did you do wrong? I don't know. Come on. Wait a minute. So it won't be a total loss. Come on. <laughs> Oh, look, somebody lost his wallet. Oh, you'll have to turn it into Mr. Van Such. He handles the lost and found personally. He does, but why? The reward. <laughs> Two hundred dollars a day. This morning, the manager stared at me. Six hundred dollars worth. 
got to get this man such guy kidnapped already. Oh, you guys make me sick. If you spend half as much energy trying to get a decent job. That's it. What are you, a troublemaker? You see, women. What are you doing here anyhow? Nag, nag, nag. That's all they do. Who needs it? Who needs women anyway? Ha! Huh. Got to think of something to get them up here. Now, what would appeal to a guy like that? Something that would hook him. Something that would bring him all the way from his office, all the way over here. Uh, <clears throat> Gloria, honey. Uh-huh. I was just wondering, would you mind doing me a little favor? You see, Who we... Who needs women? Hmm? You take the stockings and see if you can get him up here. Oh, so that's the way it is. Well, you probably couldn't cut the mustard anyhow. What's that? I mean, to lure a millionaire up here, that takes talent. Listen, you, if, if I really wanted to get that guy up here, well, all I'd have to do would be snap my fingers like that. <laughs> Did somebody here lose a wallet? Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Eddie, what in heaven's name are you doing in this act? Now, wait a minute, Mr. Stage Manager. First tell me, how did the audience like the first act? The first act went great. The audience loved it. Sure. Comedy. The peasants. <laughs> how do you like my costume? Well, there's no Shakespearean saying that you only get out of a Romeo costume what you put into it. Wait a minute. I haven't put on my muscles yet. I just got them back from Jack Benny. I want to show you what a handsome figure I strike in the mirror. I guess I struck too hard. <laughs> mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who is the second fairest of them all? Second fairest? Mm-hmm. Who's first? Our sponsor, look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of Act One, Rodney Van Such has just entered the hideout of the kidnappers. At 200 bucks a day, pretty nice hideout. Let's see what happens, huh? Mmm, this steak is delicious. Really, you've been so generous. I certainly didn't expect this just because I brought back that wallet. <laughs> Oh, may I ask one question? Sure. Uh, does dessert come with the dinner? <laughs> it's extra, but be my guest. We want you to feel real at home. Thank you. Okay, Morton. Go down to some isolated phone booth and make that call now. And remember, we want one million dollars ransom. Right. I think you are a rat the way you're giving this guy the business. Why don't you tell him he's been kidnapped? I don't have to give him a digestion, too, do I? Well, I don't want any part of it. I am leaving. Never mind. Before I leave, I'm going to tell this poor guy exactly what's up. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not going nowhere, and you'll keep your yap shut. Now, sit down over there and mind your own business. <laughs> Sir. Hospitable as you've been to me, I cannot stand idly by and allow you to speak in this manner to a lady. Naturally. Now, either you will apologize or I'm leaving. Yeah, we'll leave together. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Who's leaving? Nobody's leaving! Sir, I must insist that you apologize. Yeah, apologize. All right. I apologize! <laughs> but it's just to keep him happy. Gee, nobody ever stood up for me like that before. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I hate imposing. 
But would you mind doing that again? Like this? That's strange. What's the matter? The only other time I ever felt like that was when I counted my second hundred million. Oh, you're cute. Yes. Gee, how could I ever see anything in a crumb like Charlie when a guy like you's around? Oh, now, now, I, I wouldn't say that about your friend Charlie. Well, after all, look how beautifully he's entertaining me, just because I brought back his wallet. Oh, don't kid yourself. He ain't paying for that meal. He ain't paying for this suite, either. Oh, really? Well, who is? You are. Who are? I mean, I is? I mean, what? You've been kidnapped. They're holding you for ransom. Ransom? Kidnap me? They can't do that. Why, I'll... I'll do I'll, what? I'll... Well, as long as I'm paying for it, I'll skip the dessert. If I could only get rid of Van Such for a couple of days, I'd go over his head and put through the new factory. But he won't stay away. No, he's never been sick a day in his life. Him and his fresh air and exercise. Uh, hello. Yes, this is Van Such's office. You, you've done what with him? For how much? Yes, I understand. Well, well, of course I'll do what you say as soon as I can. Well, what is it? It's been such. What's happened? Well, he's been... He's been kidnapped. Charlie, Charlie. Huh? Listen, what? listen. Somebody out there. Burglars. <laughs> what are you doing up at six o'clock in the morning? I get up every morning at six. <laughs> I knew a guy once used to get up at eight o'clock. But he was a pickpocket. He had to make the morning rush. <laughs> now, if you gentlemen will excuse me. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Well, every morning immediately after my setting up exercises, I walk 14 miles to my office. Well, you ain't going to your office this morning. I know. So I'm just walking the 14 miles. <laughs> Good morning. Charlie. Yeah? Better send that ransom money fast. Hey, what's he doing? Walking 14 miles. Oh, he did that this morning. That was to the office. Now they're walking back. Well, what's she doing? They arranged to meet halfway as she's walking them home. Oh. <laughs> Did you get the money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what'd you do with it? Where is it? I got it right here, right here, right here. You, you took a check? He seemed honest. I made him show me his driver's license. You stupid. Where can we cash it? Take it to the front desk and they need the rent money. Wait a minute. This thing is only half signed. Well, a fella explained it to me. For a check that size, it has to be co-signed by Van Such. Oh, well, that's no problem. Come here. Oh, pardon me. Well, as such, how'd you like to walk out of here a free man? Naturally. Okay. And all you gotta do is write your name on this little piece of paper. Oh, of course. That's all you want me to do. Pay to the bearer one million dollars, and I sign right here. Rodney Van. <laughs> one million dollars. <laughs> I had the craziest nightmare. I, I dreamed I was signing a check for one million 
Cut out the funny business. Are you signing a thing? You start signing or we start shooting. Do I get a blindfold and a cigarette? Please sign it, honey. They mean business. But you don't understand. If I don't sign it, they'll kill me. And if I do sign it, I'll kill myself. <laughs> no. You do it. Look, Van, we feel we're being fair about this. So this is positively our last offer. You can walk out of here scot-free for a lousy 500,000 bucks. Now, is it a deal or not? Sorry. 7.30, getting near my bedtime. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to bed until we settle this. We're not spending another 24 hours in his joint at $200 a day. Hey, how do you like this? $200,000 down, a grand a week for three years. We absorb all carrying charges. You can't pass that up. That's a real steal. You'll have to find somebody else. Well, don't you think you owe us something for our time? Make us an offer. <laughs> Bam! This is positively our final, 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 final offer! Would you mind paying our bill here so we don't get the trouble with the hotel? <laughs> well, that's fair, if Gloria thinks so. You hear that? We can go! We're free! We're free! <laughs> Gee, that's the sweetest thing anybody ever did for three crazy mixed-up kidnappers. There's only one way I can thank you. Van! Van, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm wonderful. <laughs> the police are downstairs racing around the lobby after the kidnappers. Now, before you hear this from anybody else, I've got to confess something. I uh, uh, started the new factory out west. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Gloria, how much does a wedding license cost? Only two dollars. Oh, well, now, surely we can get something better than that. Well, we should have a ring. I know a little jeweler on 3rd Avenue called Kelly. Uh oh I know a big jeweler on 5th Avenue called Tiffany's. Oh, but they're so expensive. Naturally. <laughs> Give me the police, quick. Hello. I want to report a fiendish plot. Get over to Tiffany's right away and pick up a man posing as Rodney Van Such. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next thing on the program is a lamb's tail. You know what a lamb's tail is? It's something I'll be back in two shakes of a. Uh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how did you like how much for Van Such? Good. It's safe to come out, Vincent Price. Vince, you've given me so many fine performances and so many great movies, it's a privilege to have you here. Well, that's very nice of you, Eddie, but you've given even finer performances and even greater movies than I have. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I wouldn't either, but my agent needs the 10%. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, and on his behalf. Yeah, uh, just a moment. You're not going to leave without us doing that very good joke, huh? Oh, Eddie, look, didn't we agree about that joke in rehearsals? Yeah, but it, it's such a natural spot for it, and it's such a funny joke. Well, it's your show, Eddie. Go ahead. You know, you play this miserly character in this play so much that I thought perhaps from now on the people would start calling you... Uh, what would they call me, Eddie? Vincent Half Price. <laughs> And I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be back again next week 
for another half hour of the Eddie Cantor Comedy Theater. And until we meet again, remember... I love to spend these moments with you as friend to friend. I'm sorry they're through. I'm telling you just how I feel. I hope you feel that way too. Let's make a date for some other night. I'm here to state, it will be my delight.